everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and once again welcome to another episode of Questions and Coffee with David. These is where I answer all of your questions that come in through Facebook and YouTube and through email to try to help you with all your home studio questions, your mixing questions, your mastering questions, your recording questions, your gear questions and everything that has to do with your home studio. If you want one of your questions answered in an upcoming episode, please send your email to info at HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and I will be sure to feature your question in an upcoming episode episode. So this week we have three questions. And before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and sign up for your five free mixing training courses worth about $110 uh, just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. It is right on the homepage uh, and you'll get five free mixing training courses. So now let's get into this week's set of questions. And this is question number one. Okay. Question number one comes from Roger and Roger writes in, Hi Dave, I'm considering buying an Apple Pro laptop for recording and mixing. Uh, mixing, it, will it be able to handle loads of plugins? I know at least eight gigs of RAM, but I'm looking at a 16 gig i7. The reason for the laptop over a desktop is live recording, much easier to transport. I have purchased several of your products and they have been a world of help. Any guidance regarding a new computer would be helpful. Thanks, Roger. Roger, thank you for writing in. Uh, yeah, an Apple, an Apple MacBook Pro is a great laptop. I have one right here as I'm reading off the questions and I use a Mac Pro in my studio. I love Apple for recording. I know lots of people that use PC, but I don't, I've never had any real, uh, I've struggled a lot with PC over the years. I'm a Mac guy and been a Mac guy for a long, long time. Great computer. You're absolutely right. Go with something with 16 gigs of RAM. If you can afford it, that will help you out tremendously. Depending on the laptop, you might even be able to put more than 16 gigs of RAM in. And you can usually do that yourself if it's not in your budget to buy the RAM right out of the gate. But the most RAM you could put in that uh, laptop, the better. 16 would be minimal, even though the requirements for running DAWs and stuff is usually only eight gigs. That's the minimum requirements. Put 16 gigs in, you will have no problems at all. Now, as far as can you run tons of plugins? Well, once again, just like with the RAM, make sure when you're purchasing your computer, get the fastest processor that you can afford. So when you go to Apple's website or go into their store and you go to buy one of their laptops, you can spec it out with an upgraded processor and upgraded memory. I would do that. Again, if it's in your budget, it may cost you a few hundred dollars more, Roger, but in the end, you're going to have this computer for a much longer period of time and you're not going to outgrow it. So get the fastest processor you can afford, get the 16 gigs of RAM, get the i7, you'll be good to go. Now, as far as running lots of plugins, well, it really depends when you say lots, what does that really mean? From a recording perspective, Depending on your audio interface, if you have something like the Studio 192 or one of the Quantum interfaces or a Studio Live Series 3 mixer, when you're recording uh, there through those interfaces or something like a Universal Audio Apollo, you can record through the plugins with no latency into Studio One and you can get, um, you know, you can do all of that with those kinds of interfaces. Um, if you don't have one of those types of interfaces and you just have, say, like a, an audio box USB, for example, you're not going to be able to record through the plugins on the DSP inside of the interface, that interface doesn't have that. You can always put the plugins on in Studio One as an insert and record through them. But again, depending on how many plugins, what kind of plugins and all that stuff uh, will depend on whether you're gonna get latency. You're gonna wanna pay attention to the buffer size setting in the Studio One Preferences window. I also have videos on my YouTube channel talking all about that, so make sure you check up on that as well. From a mixing perspective, if you have 16 gigs of RAM with an i7 and a pretty a 3.0 gigahertz processor or faster, you should be able to put especially the stock plugins, as many of these plugins on in your session as you want, more than enough and you shouldn't have any problem at all. When you start talking about VST instruments, that's a little bit of a different story and it's totally dependent on the plugin itself, whether it's a VST by PreSonus or from Tune Tracks, Easy Drummer or Slate Digital or any, or any of these other third party companies, all of their plugins will take up a different amount of CPU power. So you have to be careful about that. But with the machine that we're kind of talking about that you're specking out, you should be good for most sessions. I mean, unless you have a giant 100 track session and you're trying to put 200 plugins in your session, you should be okay. If you get to the point where you're running those kinds of sessions and you really wanna load up on all different plugins and you don't wanna be limited by your computer, that's when you start looking at things like Universal Audio or looking at the Wave Sound Grid where you run the plugins off a separate piece of hardware. And again, there's a ton of videos on my YouTube channel talking about that whole setup and that whole concept you may want to check that out. So that is a great computer you got specced out. Fastest processor you can afford at the time of purchase. Try to get that 16 gigs of RAM. You've already pointed that out and you should be good to go. 
an Apple uh, I'm a MacBook Pro laptop computer is fantastic and I've recorded with laptops MacBook Pros in clubs for many years and I'm the one I'm sitting in right in front of now uh, for this uh, video here is from 2011 this has 16 gigs of RAM and uh, I think it's only a dual core and I've recorded uh, you know 8 10 tracks in a live setting with no problem at all directly into Studio One so you're not going to have any problems as far as that goes okay so I hope that answers your question Roger any more questions hit me up and I will be glad to help you so now let's move on to question number two okay question number two comes in from Tom and Tom writes in the question I have has to do with putting a CD together using several finished songs and being able to mix them together so the listener does not have to constantly adjust the volume I am working with studio one professional version 3.5 and a uh, Mac OS 64-bit uh, operating system. I was just wondering if there's a product out there that I can get to analyze several songs and have it automatically balance them out and sound consistent and have a consistent sound. I've attempted to balance each individual song against each other, but I feel that there is a more efficient way to analyze several tracks at the same time. A lot of these tracks were mixed using various versions of Studio One over several years. Plus my mixing ability isn't the best yet, so EQ and compression settings vary as well. I have several of your products already and I would, uh, would like to build on that library. What do you suggest? Thanks for your time and direction, Tom. Tom, well, thank you for writing in. So what you're really describing is the mastering process is really what you're describing, where you're taking several songs that might have been uh, recorded at different times in different studios with different DAWs, different musicians, all of those uh, variables can apply or some of them can and you're trying to get them to sound like one cohesive body of work so when the listener listens back to the song song one and song two they sound like they belong together on the record the volumes aren't um, different from each other and from a tonal aspect EQ and compression wise they sound similar that is the mastering process now is there a plugin out there that you just magically drop on it and it automatically balances all of this levels you know I'm sure there is I don't use one, I've never used one because anything like that that's gonna do that automatically, there's gonna be a bunch of errors in there is my guess. It's not gonna be as seamless as you think. If you're using Studio One Professional, then you already have the project page, which is the mastering suite of Studio One. I think you should spend some time checking out my channel as well as some other YouTube channels um, and how to use that, but that is really where you want to do exactly what you're describing, where you're going to bring in all your different WAV files into the mastering uh, suite or the project page. You can individually and manually adjust the volumes between the songs as you suggest to get them somewhat balanced. You can use EQ and compression on each individual song or on the whole thing as as a session to help with you uh, as far as that goes um, and that is really what you need to do mastering is an art form just like mixing so depending on how consistent your different sessions were and you mentioned they were recorded over several years using different versions of studio one but if they're somewhat consistent a good mastering engineer will be able to get those things to sound like they're really cohesive now if it's so far out of whack you you might only be able to take it so far it really depends and i'd have to hear all the different songs and hear the body of work to really know but what you're describing is the mastering process so um, i don't know of a magic plugin that does that and even if there were one i wouldn't suggest that you're probably not going to be happy with the results i think you need to learn a little bit more about the mastering process and i have a course called mastering made easy on my website you can check that out that was done in an older version <clears throat> excuse me of studio one professional but all the techniques and stuff apply um, and i would start down that road first and not not try to find a magic plugin because i don't know that there is one i'm sure there's plugins out there will balance the the overall volume level but it's not going to help you from an EQ and a compression standpoint. And that really is equally as important as getting that thing to sound consistent. So when the listener listens to song one and then song two, it sounds cohesive as a body of work. So I hope that answers your question, Tom. Um, it sounds like you'll probably have a few more questions. It's okay. Hit me up and I'll try to help you. Um, and again, search my YouTube channel and search Mastering Made Easy on homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And that will push you in the right direction, no question. But I'm here to help if you have any more questions. So that is it for this week's episode of questions and coffee with david thanks so much for writing in once again if you want one of your questions answered hit me up at info at home recording made easy.com once again please subscribe to my youtube channel please share this video with others and don't forget to go to home recording made easy.com and get your five free training courses no charge to you worth about 110 bucks and i will see you in the next questions and coffee video take care